Hey guys, Justin Conroy, Financial Dad here, and today I want to walk you through an exercise that my wife and I do every single year. By the end of this video, if you follow along with me, you should have a really good idea of the answer to the question, am I saving enough money? If this is your first time here and you want to learn tips, tricks, and hacks related to personal finance, how to build wealth, and how to better manage your money, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. So this exercise is all about helping you figure out not only how much money you should save, but it's also about helping you budget for things long term so that you don't have to go into debt. And I think the best way of explaining the exercise is by walking you through an example. So let's start off by getting you in the right mindset by doing a very simple example, and then we'll expand on the idea. Let's imagine for a simple example that you're 22 years old. You're still driving your first car, you just graduated college, and you've just landed your first real job. What big expenses are coming your way? Well, weddings usually cost a lot of money, right? In fact, the average American gets married around 28 years old and the average wedding costs about $34,000. So if you're currently 22 years old, that means we have six years to save up $34,000, which means that we need to save about $472 per month for the next six years starting now. Yep, that's $472 per month for the next six years just so we can get married. Boom, done. That's the simplest example. You see where this is going? Now let's expand on this idea. This is all about planning out the big expenses, not the normal everyday things. So your budget for food, gas, rent, emergency funds, entertainment, all those other things, they're not really the focus of this discussion. So with that in mind, let's plan out the rest of our life. Let's think about all the big expenses that we have coming. It sounds like a task that's too big, right? But it really isn't. Now I've no doubt we're gonna miss some things, but isn't it better to plan for and be ready for some things than no things? So for the expanded example, I'm gonna jump over to my computer and run through some numbers in a spreadsheet. But if you're not into spreadsheets, don't freak out. As you saw from the simple example, you can do all of this on paper by hand very easily because it's nothing more than fifth grade simple math. There isn't anything fancy going on here. So what other big things are coming up in our 22 year old's life? Well, if you look at the average American, we've got a few really big things coming up in the next 15 years. More than likely, you're gonna to wanna to spend some money on a wedding, a new car for you, a new car for your spouse, a down payment on your first home, furniture for that home, and more than likely, you and your spouse are going to want to have a few kids, so you'll either need to spend money on a birth or an adoption. So for each of these items, let's put down a target age that we expect we'll need to make the expense. Then put down what we expect to pay for each of these. If you don't know, Google is super useful. I mean, that's where I got all the numbers for this video after all. Now, if we run the same math we did before, we get our total monthly number that we should be saving. Now, that's a lot more than you thought, right? So this type of math is great for things that are less than 10 or 15 years away. But once you add in all the other things that you'll have to worry about over the next 70 years, the math kind of breaks down. And on top of that, this method doesn't yet account for the things that have already been purchased and are no longer needed on the list. So now that you see the idea, let's expand on this one more time and make this work for our whole life. Now, I don't want this to be a spreadsheet tutorial, so I'll just explain what I've done here. I went ahead and assumed that we'd spend about $10,000 on new furniture every 15 years, we'd buy new cars for you and your spouse every 10 years, we'd buy our kids some cheap cars when they turn 16, and we'd start putting away some money into some 529 plans for college funds as soon as the kids are born. Next, I added a column to denote how long we intend to save for things. I did this to account for things like cars. You don't need to be saving up for car number three if you haven't even bought car number two yet. Finally. I listed out each year of our life and I did some spreadsheet magic to have it automatically calculate the per month savings of each item between the time that you should start and stop saving the money. So as a result, we get a total monthly value per year of our life that we should plan to save. This will ensure that we always have the money that we need to pay for the things that we know are coming in the future. The interesting thing about making this video and looking at all this data, if you chart this out, you really start to notice that all the big stuff typically happens before you turn 35. Houses, kids, cars, weddings, I mean, it's insane. No wonder most people find themselves in huge amounts of debt. Because I would venture to say that putting away $2,000 per month for your typical 25 year old isn't really feasible. So why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we set these unreasonable expectations to keep up with the Joneses? Now I challenge you, do this exercise for yourself. Use your own numbers, your own targets, and your own savings expectations and see what comes out. Use the results to help guide your own finances so that you can either know what you need to do to achieve your goals or adjust your goals to be more reasonable. So are you saving enough money to do the things that you want to do in life? For most people, the answer will be no. 
So be sure to click and watch the video on the screen right now because it will explain why budgeting is so important and how you can use it as a tool to help you reach your financial goals. Thanks for watching.